Greetings everyone. I hope you're well and having a great day. I'm Donovan and welcome to Burnout and Break Stuff. Today's BBS video will be covering hot dog flavored waters, under dash wiring harness repairs, steering column wiring repairs, and repairs to the instrument cluster. So that being said, let's get into it. Let's get it repaired. Let's get it installed. Hot dog flavored water needs an under dash wiring harness. Here's the bucket of wiring that came with the project. You know, some, some assembly, some assembly required. Now there's wiring there and just plenty of wiring. It, oh, there's, there's the, there's the bottom of it. So anywho, what we're going to do today is look at our wiring harnesses, see which ones best to uh, go through and rebuild. Looks like, well, looks like th <laughs> this will be the one. Uh, this one appears to be missing the fuse block. So we'll set that aside. Probably use, possibly use parts from that for a future build. And then it's good to know the difference between 73 and earlier and 74 and later as to not mix them up. So let's get into rebuilding one. With our wiring harness laid out on the fabrication table and a look-see at its overall condition, what comes to site quickly is someone got in here for access to power this one goes to the cigarette lighter in some instances I believe the service manual refers to it as a cigar lighter but anyway I uh, will replace that and I will install a fuse here to bypass this connector to the ignition switch and then here with our headlight our headlight connector if one of the tabs is broken off right here I mean I could use a tie wrap to wrap around it to, but let's since I have the parts to fix it let's do that this is the other 73 wiring harness that came in the bucket of wire and we can see right here where those wires are that's where the fuse block was this wiring harness is in better condition than the other one had someone not hacked the fuse block off of there we could have used this one so I will take the headlight connector off of here <clears throat> Excuse me. And see, this one isn't burned up like our other one. I'll use the headlight switch connector. I will take the, uh, right there, I'll take the cigarette lighter wire out of there and swap it into the other one and get it all wrapped back up and we'll get it tested. With the vinyl wrap off of our wiring harness, I use black vinyl tape to hold the nodes. I do not recommend using black vinyl tape to rewrap the wiring harness. I clean, clean these off with Griot's uh, interior cleaner and then rewrap it reusing that. Uh, here, this was cut 
in the other wire harness as well as it went into the fuse block so it's too short to make this replacement so what I'm going to do is back up inside the wiring harness cut it off solder it and heat shrink it I have flux solder and marine marine grade heat shrink tubing that tubing has glue inside of it so when it's heated up it will uh, push glue out of both ends and seal that up so that's what I'm working with there and this is an add-on for the windshield washer reservoir Chrysler just put it on the outside of the vinyl wrap and kind of twisted it around and it, it's too short to reach the uh, windshield wiper switch so I sourced this from our parts wiring harness and it's long enough to reach so I'll put it inside the vinyl wrap here's our removed headlight connector that we will install here I use this uh, blue point tool it's GA 500A these little tabs right here to push down on the back of the connector this little tab, there's tabs right here on the backs of these and that's how they're held in there you put this little screwdriver like slot thing in the front and run it back and you can hear it click and it'll pop loose I've made one out of a sweeper street sweeper brush i find these on the ground in town and pick them up on occasion they come in handy for things like that so that's where we are in the process we're going to make our repairs our splices and then uh, get it wrapped back up now we have our repairs complete installed the longer brown with a white trace for our windshield washer reservoir and here we have our new or new ie replacement connector now have two clips that's good and here here is my solder splice with heat shrink and if you'd like me to do a how to properly solder and heat shrink video let me know in the comments and uh, I'd be willing to do that I've been doing it for a long time so now we're ready to use our interior cleaner rag wipe down our vinyl wraps reinstall them and then and then attach it to our instrument cluster to test out the lighting repairs and to test the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. With our vinyl wrap reinstalled, our wiring harness is as good as old. And what we're gonna do next is go ahead and bring that instrument cluster over there, over here and connect it up to our wiring harness and test the lighting, test the fuel gauge, test the temperature gauge. With the wiring harness completed for the hot dog flavored water, now I'm gonna disassemble its instrument cluster, uh, clean it up, test the gauges, and make sure all the lights have been replaced and they're in good working order. Once I get this uh, disassembled, cleaned up, and reassembled, I'll connect a wire harness to it and use my boost box to energize the wiring harness to check the fuel gauge, the temperature gauge, the lighting, and that should complete this part of it. That way, with the steering column and the dash taken apart in hot dog flavored water, <clears throat> excuse me, it will facilitate easier installation of the wire harness and the instrument cluster prior to putting the steering column in the car. So that's what we're up to. Let's get started. Uh, I've already removed the light switch. There's Sometimes there's a set screw on here, but more times than not, the little knob just pulls off. And then it has this uh, 
fastener on here with several different uh, slots in it and I just use a screwdriver. I don't have the special tool for it, so I just use the screwdriver to spin that around, getting that loose. Now the headlight switch is, is kind of a different animal in the way that uh, the, the lever or the knob pulls out, but then it gets stuck. And the secret to that is there's a little button right here on the back side of the switch that needs to be depressed. And upon depressing the button, the shaft comes out of that. And it has the same type of uh, slotted fastener, but instead of using that screwdriver, they make the slot the size of a number two Phillips screwdriver, which makes it quite handy for getting it out of there. So there we go. That out of the way. Another thing that, uh, another reason taking it apart to check it out is there's, sounds like broken pieces of plastic inside the uh, cluster itself. Next, I'm gonna remove the plastic face. One of the nice things about this one is someone was generous enough to not screw the fastener so tight it breaks the tops of the plastic out. So I'm gonna use my quarter inch nut driver. <clears throat> nut driver, yeah, see. these out. Instruments don't look uh, don't look bad. Don't look. Uh, seen these plenty where they've been rusted, and uh, they're not in good shape at all. So that's decent there. And there's our there's our probably our loose piece of plastic. The fastened seat belts uh, pleat there. Lens. So yes. Next, I will take all the lamps out of it and check those and just give this a clean up. And then on the plastic, I have some Meguiar's plastic polish. I'll wipe these down and polish them up and get our instrument cluster put back together. The wire harness attached to it and uh, boost box on it. We'll check all the gauges, make sure the lights work, get it all put back together, get it installed in the car. That's all there is to it. Now with our instrument cluster completely disassembled, we have our exploded view here and the pieces of plastic or rattling things that I heard inside the cluster itself turns out to be there's two little tabs on each one of these light fixtures and several of them are broken off and were floating around inside the housing so I'll have to replace those um, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mild amount of lubricant inside the pinion of our transmission here for the speedometer because I don't know how many of these older cars, several come to mind, truck, roadrunner. Sounds like a hand crank coffee grinder and the speedometer's jumping around. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant in there to help facilitate that to not happen in the future. And then I'm just gonna use a glass cleaner and a cloth to clean out the inside of the 
housing here and the lens here. I'll also have to add a small amount of uh, adhesive to glue the lens back down where those plastic welds have broken free. And then we'll get this all assembled. With everything wiped down, cleaned up, you know, polish used on the clear sections of the instrument cluster for the gauge and uh, our copper on the bake lights been cleaned to give good contact. Uh, I have run into issues, not on this particular uh, bake light panel. These pins are just hollow press-in tubes and sometimes they get uh, broken off or cracked in poor contact. They can be fixed by taking a wire stripping the insulation off and soldering the wire tinning it and then sliding it up inside of here and then and then soldering it to the uh, copper on the bakelite board i've repaired plenty of them in the past that way the ge uh, 158 lamps all eight of them have been tested all of the fixtures are good they should easily push in and lightly turn to the right to lock them in. Now that we have all of this done, let's go ahead and reassemble our instrument cluster and get it ready for testing. Here is our finished cluster reassembled and ready for testing. I think it looks pretty doggone good for what it was. Obviously not perfect, but good enough for hot dog flavored water. Let's give it a test and make sure our instrumentation works, all our lighting works, and we'll get ready to uh, reinstall it once the testing is done. What's with all the wiring? Yikes. What do you have going on here? Like Frankenstein's workshop or something or other? No, not at all. I'll just have our reworked dash wiring harness connected to a 12 volt source. We are going to verify our cleaned up instrument cluster. Went through it, made sure all the gauges were good, that type of thing. And now we've got it plugged in. So fuses in our fuse block. And we're connected up in the back here as if it was in the car itself. And what I will do is get us up on this tripod so I can get my hands free. And we'll turn this ignition switch on, go through and do a fuel gauge test, a temperature gauge test, flash on the oil light and the brake light, and see that we've made progress towards getting hot dog flavored water another step closer to back on the road. Now we're going to turn on our ignition switch, the column here that we have mocked up. There we go. And what we're going to do now is we're going to test our fuel gauge by grounding the fuel sending unit wire that would be located back on the fuel tank. Just ground it right here and we should see our fuel gauge go up, making sure that it's functioning properly. We can see that it is. Full sweep test on the gauge. That one's good. So we'll set that aside. Next we'll do the temperature gauge, which works in the same, same way 
we will put a ground on our temperature gauge and we should get full sweep on it. As we see, that's what's happening. So that's excellent news. That means our, our five volt regulator on the back of the instrument cluster is doing what it's supposed to do. Oil light. Brake light. If a person doesn't run an oil sending unit because they have a mechanical gauge, they can always use the oil light for repurposing to a shift light or roll control, that type of a thing. And finally, what you won't be able to see on the, because it's so bright in here, here's our, our instrument cluster lighting. That's the HVAC control light lights up for defrost, heat, that type of thing. And I can see up in the, that all my, all my lamps are good. My light switch works. So everything there is good and basically ready for assembly in our dart sport. I affectionately refer to as hot dog flavored water. It's a fun name. It's red, faded red, kind of like a hot dog. And one of the nifty things is auto meter makes LED lamp replacements for these Chrysler instrument clusters. These just pull out like so. Just pull out of there. And these just snap back in place. Now, with our interior removed, and I use interior uh, lightly, with our, our driver's seat out of the way, our console and shifter out of the way, allowing us better access to the dash area. I'm going to first uh, install the bulkhead connector and then route the wiring through the dash and mount the fuse block in its appropriate location. So that's what I'm up to. Let's get it installed. After many minutes of struggling to install our wiring harness, let's take a look at how we did. So there's our bulkhead connector plugged in. Our wiring is routed there and above on the hanging out from the hangers on the upper portion of the dash frame. Our fuse block is secure. And we have our wire routed down for the rear, our high beam switch. Prior to installing our instrument cluster for ease of access to the fasteners on the back of this uh, interior dress up, I believe it's part of the A88 decor, uh, interior decor package. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and struggle this up onto here. That'll allow me to have access to those fasteners prior to installing the instrument cluster. Next up in our installation process is the instrument cluster. Two things are important to remember here. One, on our ammeter gauge, we want to get our red wire where it says red on our Bakelite board. We want to then make sure that we get these fasteners very secure without breaking our ammeter. That way our, uh, we don't have a high resistance connection that then causes this to burn down. 
Another part is when we finally get to installing the cluster onto the dash frame itself, we don't over tighten these three fasteners breaking the plastic out of the top of the cluster. So let's get started. With our instrument cluster installed, let's see how we did. Take a look. Excellent. Get the glove box lid installed and a steering column in it. It'll look a little bit more like an automobile. Next up on our to do ski list here is to get our steering column installed. I've marked the indexing spline in the uh, steering coupling here. I also have the indexing spline marked on the steering sector. Hopefully to make this easier, it's not very easy with just one person, but I'm gonna make the best of it because that's all I have is me, the one person. All right, let's get it installed. Okay. After struggling our steering column in here by myself, uh, which I wouldn't want anybody to watch that because it's not fun. And so let's go ahead and put the last piece of today's puzzle together. All right, our final shot here of the day we have our dash pad, our instrument cluster, our interior decor package dress up there, the wood green, if you will, our steering wheel. So, I think we did all right. Our ratty muscle car is another step, another project closer to hitting the road.